Did you know that many people give expert opinions without having the faintest idea what they're talking about? Hi everyone, my name is Yed Elmay and I don't know what the hell I'm talking about either. But today, we'll get actual experts to answer the real question. Why are cats so scared of cucumber? And when you dial a wrong number, why do they always answer? Hello, hello! Wrong number. Where does Lynn come from? Oh. Belly button. Why? Hmm. Obviously. Okay, but seriously though. Today we're gonna take real questions that you and others have asked on social media and get these experts to explain and when necessary debunk. This is climate change support. What are the three most common myths about climate change? <laughs> and what's even the point in debunking them? Shouldn't we just let people believe whatever they want? So there are lots of myths associated with climate change. So the first one is there's no debate among scientists about climate change. For scientists, it's clear that climate change is happening and that it's caused by humans. There's no other plausible reason why carbon dioxide and temperatures would be rising at the rate that we've seen, which is unprecedented in human history and the history of the Earth. The second myth that I'd like to clear up is that there's some sort of technological solution that's going to save us all from climate change. In reality, we have to take an all of society approach to really reduce the impacts of climate change. That means understanding how is climate change going to affect our cities? How is it going to affect agriculture and, and our food systems? How is it going to affect companies and our livelihoods? So the third myth that I often hear is that we can't do anything about climate change. I don't think that's true. Every single individual has the option and perhaps even the prerogative to do something about climate change. Next for the burning issue, heat waves. Do you remember last summer when people put their heads in fridges? By, by the way, don't, 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 don't do that. It might kill you faster than climate change. Well, heat waves are getting hotter and lasting longer. Just like my naps during endless, endless Zoom calls. Bruh. Next question is from Twitter, I think, and it asks if there are any advantages to heat waves. Why are heat waves bad? Don't they mean that some areas of my country will be better for farming? Well, that's a good question. Um, heat waves are bad because when we say heat waves, we mean that the levels of temperature that we have reached do not allow even the human beings to feel comfortable. This also means that at the same time, crops can neither be comfortable at all. So uh, unfortunately, heat waves are not going to help us in our farming. Oh, I've got an analogy. Climate change, it's kind of like pineapple on pizza. It, it, it's a polarizing issue, but there's really no debate. It's horrible and disgusting. I love pineapple pizza. Look, the fact of the matter is, the worsening droughts, storms, and heat waves that come with climate change are already having deadly consequences, which makes the next question even more relevant to me. The climate crisis is leading us to hunger and poverty, and vulnerable populations are the ones most affected. Which strategies can be used to start putting their needs first? So science is very clear that the impacts of climate change are distributed very unevenly. And it is indeed true that the most vulnerable, especially also the poorest people, but also for instance elderly and sick people in rich countries, are much worse affected than others who were able to cope with shocks. And that also provides the answer to what you do about it. Because instead of focusing only on the climate, we now actually look at vulnerable populations at the coast. And for instance, if they don't have an early warning system to get out of harm's way, when a storm surge arises, maybe that's a much better investment than a seawall. Um, and if you build an early warning system, don't just think about the average person in the population, but look after the most vulnerable. Maybe, for instance, people with disabilities or people that might be left behind because they're, they're, they don't have an extended family to take care of them. I guess I really feel like climate change is like being on a bus, but the bus is on fire. The road is also on fire, no one is driving, and the bus is right about to go over a cliff. By the way, the cliff is on fire too. I mean, what can little old me do to make a difference? My overall message would be that you matter. 
And you matter in two ways. You cause climate change and you can reduce that. You absolutely can do that and you can be part of the solution. But you also matter because you live on planet Earth and planet Earth is experiencing climate change and that does affect you and it affects the people you care about. So you also matter because you need to be part of this adaptation process to think about how can we prepare ourselves? How can we prepare to protect our loved ones? So, as you can see, we can all take small steps to acting and living more sustainably. We only have one planet, people. And unless you've got Elon Musk on speed dial like I do, you're all staying right here. And there we are. I hope you all learned something new today. If you want to get more videos like this, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell button below if you want to get notifications on our next uploads. Are there any other climate issues you want to know about? Do you have any other questions for our experts? Let us know in the comments below.